Freedom Budget for the state of Florida. Four years ago, I had the privilege of uh, doing a governor's budget recommendation in February of 2019. And at that time, people were excited about the direction of Florida. We were able to propose a budget that was really healthy all across the board. We had $5.2 billion in total reserves. We had $1.4 billion in unallocated general revenue. Our budget stabilization fund had $1.6 billion in it, and we were also proud to be able to propose tax relief of $335 million. When we did that, I remember people were happy. People said Florida is well managed, and this is a, this is a very sound budget. Now, what's happened since 2019? Well, we had a global pandemic. We've seen massive inflation like we haven't seen in many, many decades. We saw shortages of key items like baby formula. We've seen supply chain disruptions, and we've seen very, very high energy costs. And yet, through all of that, uh, Florida is stronger than ever. We have 2.5% unemployment, far below the national average, and that is with an expanding labor force, whereas you haven't necessarily seen that in all other parts of the country. We're number one in net in migration. We are now the fastest growing state in the United States, which is not easy to do when you already have 22 million people. We have some of the lowest per capita state tax burden and debt per capita of any state in all 50 states. We're number one in new business formations, and we've created over 425,000 private sector jobs in 2022 alone. So if we were here four years ago and people said that we would be able to propose what we're proposing today, most people probably would have said that that wouldn't have been possible. But if you would have told them everything that had happened in these four years, they definitely said it wouldn't have been possible. Well, today we're able to propose this framework for freedom budget that has total reserves, whereas we were 5.2 billion four years ago, we're able to propose total reserves of $15.7 billion, whereas we had unallocated general revenue four years ago at $1.4 billion. Uh, today, we're able to propose $6.9 billion in unallocated general revenue. Our budget stabilization fund four years ago was $1.6 billion. Uh, today, we can propose that rainy day fund at $3.4 billion. And whereas we proposed $335 million in tax relief four years ago, today we're able to do $2 billion in tax relief, including the half a billion dollars we've already gotten signed into law with our toll relief program. So that is strong performance. That shows you that this state is going in the right direction. Now you look at that and you see those reserves, and that is $15.7 billion not even accounting what the revenue is going to look like between now and the end of June. They redid the revenue estimates last summer because we had been blowing past them. And so it's like, okay, you kind of got to figure out things are going well. We're churning out a lot of revenue. We have people visiting, all this other stuff, home sales. So they, they upped it. And they said, okay, we are expecting more revenue now. And yet every month since they did that, we far exceeded, sometimes by a couple hundred million, sometimes by 500 million. So this budget doesn't even include February, March, April, May, June, but even being very conservative, you're looking at another billion, billion and a half on top of this, so probably end up over 17 billion, but that's also taking out what we just proposed earlier this week with the Moving Florida Forward initiative. We're in a situation where our state's growing, and not just for people moving here, all the people that visit here. We've been very strong on infrastructure historically in Florida, not just, not just with me, but some of this stuff really needs to get moving. And so we have very critical projects in places like Central Florida, Tampa Bay, uh, South Florida, the, even the Panhandle, that are in the kitty that are being planned to be done, but would take 20 some years to be able to do. So we're doing $7 billion, including $4 billion in general revenue this year to be able to accelerate that. So you're gonna have some of those programs that are gonna be done uh, a decade earlier than what it was ever doing. Had we not done that, you'd end up with well over uh, 20 billion, 22 billion, somewhere around there 
in total reserves. And you, would, you don't want to be like California, where you have uh, a massive budget shortfall. You, know, you want to be healthy. You want to make sure that you have strong reserves. But at the same time, when you're in a situation where you have really persistent inflation, uh, where you have a growing state, where there's infrastructure needs, uh, you don't want to just have all this money just sitting there uh, because that's telling me that you're not doing as good a job as you need to be doing, returning money back to the people with tax relief, meeting needs that are really, really significant. And so we're able to do all of this, still have those reserves where no one would thought possible, but, I mean, we're doing really, really big things. So if you look at the tax relief, we already did the $500 million. I had promised that earlier uh, last year, and we didn't even have to wait till the regular session. We got it done in December because we thought it was important that people start off the year being able to get that. So starting this month, commuters are going to get a 50% rebate on all the tolls that they did if they have the Sun Pass or these other passes, and that's going to save people hundreds of dollars this year, and some people thousands, because you have some people that pay hundreds of dollars a month in tolls. So you take that bill from commuting, you cut that in half. That's really, really significant, especially when you have inflation crunch. We're also doing permanent sales tax exclusions on all baby necessities, including cribs and strollers. It's hard enough raising kids as it is. Now you get baby food, diapers, wipes, the whole baby clothes, the whole shebang, including things like cribs and strollers, which are very, very expensive. So that is going to be permanently uh, tax-free in the state of Florida. Uh, we're also doing a permanent exclusion on all over-the-counter pet medications because they're parts of our families too, and you, these are things that you need to do. So that's going to give a lot of Floridians relief. And then we just added, because I think it needs to be done, uh, no tax permanently on gas stoves. They want your gas stove, and we're not going to let that happen. And we're not even a state. The way Florida was built, a lot of this wasn't even connected to gas lines. You got a lot of electric stuff. But it's just the principle of, you know, this is ridiculous that they, and they do want to go after it. They got blowback, so they kind of had to back off. They want to go after the gas stoves. And so we're saying, you know, we want you to be able to buy those uh, uh, free of charge from, from the state of Florida uh, for taxes. We're also doing one-year sales tax holidays for household items under $25. And so that will be everything from detergent to trash bags. These are necessities, and people are going to be able to get those tax-free. All dental hygiene products, tax-free. All toiletries, tax-free. Children's books, tax-free. Children's toys, tax-free. All kids' athletic equipment, tax-free. And I think something really, really great um, no tax on pet food in the state of Florida. So this is going to be really, really good for families in Florida. And if you, if you do all this stuff, I mean, if a family commutes, if they have young kids and all this stuff, I mean, you're talking potentially thousands of dollars in savings when all is said and done. So we're proud to be able to, to, be able to produce that. We also have other tax relief that's very, very significant. Over $140 million for small business relief you know, they have to file their sales tax every month. They get a $30 exclusion. We're going to double that to 60 That's going to save small businesses over $700 a year. We are doing not one but two back-to-school sales tax holidays. You have one for fall semester, and then you have one for spring semester. And I know a lot of parents will appreciate that. We're going to continue doing our 14-day sales tax holiday for all disaster preparations. As we saw this past year, I mean, you uh, hope for the best. It was such a quiet hurricane season for like the first few months. And everyone's like, man, as soon as people started saying, you know what, maybe we're not going to get anything, that's when, you know, you had Ian form. And then, of course, we got hit with Nicole um, on the back end late in hurricane season. And so I think Floridians, having seen that, realize, you know, it's important to prepare. And so they're going to have the ability to do that tax-free. We're going to do 15-week sales tax for what we call the Freedom Summer. So this is outdoor recreation, this is tickets for events and museums, and really things so people can enjoy the summertime in the state of Florida. So this is something that's really significant. So $500 million for the tolls, all these other tax uh, provisions, it's $1.5 billion. The state of Florida has never done that much in tax relief before. And oh, by the way... <laughs> <laughs> 